These are moments when suspects bully the police. In this video, we'll explore four intense cases, from a suspect fighting with an officer to a whole Karen family causing a scene and ending up arrested. This is where things get real. Don't do it! Oh my God! You're under arrest. No! You're under don't, do it. don't hit me! Don't fucking hit me! Oh my God! Don't. Put your hand behind your back. What the hell is wrong with you, man? Okay, oh. I get this hair out of my mouth. Back up. She's gonna hurt me. Hey, hey, no, 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 y'all, 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 on June 27, 2023, chaos erupted at Orlando International Airport after a flight cancellation triggered a wave of anger among the passengers. A large group of approximately 200 passengers had gathered. The officers arrived promptly at the scene. The situation escalated when some passengers began yelling at the staff, with a few even going behind the counters. The officers warned that if the disruptive behavior continued, passengers would be refunded and removed from the airport. Despite these warnings, tensions remained high. If we continue this on, what's going to happen is the refund your money, you'll be trespassed from the airport. We're not going to play this game where screaming at people. I listen, for spirit, listen, stop, stop, on the frontier. stop. stop. Okay, I'm done being yelled at this whole time, and so are they. You just told Listen. me. I got an impairment. Okay, that good, good, good for you. Yelling all day. In, in a few minutes, they'll refund your money, and we'll trespass you from the airport. If that's what you want, we will do that. We are not going to play this game all night, okay? His job is to arrest you. One woman in the crowd made a dramatic scene, expressing her frustration loudly. Shortly after, one of the officers threatened her with being removed from the airport. Don't listen to him because my job, job is not to arrest people. Stop listening. You can't get you. All cops arrest people. When they do bad things, over to the spirit. Listen, I'm what's happening, let, let me explain what's going on right now because this is getting out of control. We're not keep playing this game. Everybody's upset. I understand that. I'm trying to sit down. Stop, stop. No, yes. I'm talking. Okay, I'm done. Talk, I'm talking. Talk. 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 Right now, Goa is coming here. Remember from Goa, when people start acting up, I'm just saying this because we need to get under control. People keep acting up and threatening people. I'm not saying you're doing that, but it's happening right now. So they're coming over here. And then when that starts happening, one after another, we're going to trespass one at a time out of the airport, OK? Among the crowd was Edward Harrison, whose frustration quickly escalated into aggression. As officers tried to calm the situation, Harrison's anger reached a boiling point. The 41-year-old man then pushed on a plexiglass barrier and confronted a woman and made things worse. Harrison then argued with a spirit employee and reached behind the counter to grab a computer keyboard. A police officer quickly intervened and grabbed Edward's arm to prevent any damage. In response, Edward grabbed the officer's arm back, leading to a physical confrontation. In an attempt to create distance, the officer pushed Harriston, but Harriston grabbed the officer's hands, lowered his body, and began pushing the officer backward. Both men fell to the ground, with Harriston putting one of his arms around the officer's neck in a chokehold. Meanwhile, the other officers quickly moved to intervene and tried to pull Harrison off their colleague. Temporary, 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 temporary. They're not doing anything at the moment. And I'll be on my way. Bro, don't touch me, bro. Don't touch me. 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 Now you gotta play the stay tonight.
Faulkner, now you got a f***ing place to stay. The struggle intensified as they wrestled to free the officer from Harrison's relentless grip. The officer's face turned red, and his gasps for air became more frantic. Just as it seemed he might lose consciousness, the officers managed to pry Harrison away. After being instructed to leave, Harrison resisted and claimed his leg was broken. He acted like a drama queen, saying he felt dizzy and was seeing stars. As officers tried to gain control, Edward continued to resist, leading to a scuffle. I can't even fight here. Oh, man. Stand up. Stand up. Walk you outside. My leg is broken. Stand up. I'm stand up. My leg broken. Stand up. Stand up. My leg is broken. Stand up. How the fuck I'm gonna stand up? My leg. My leg is broken. Hey man, my pants is falling down in front of all these people. I'm telling you, my leg is broken. How the fuck are you talking about? I'm walking. What the fuck are you talking about? Limp on one foot. My leg is broken, dude. My leg is broken. I don't know why. How you, how you trying to push me? My leg is broken. Right, Y'all got to get a gurney or something over here. My leg is broken. You got good? I get my bed. For like 30 seconds, he was choking me up. Like, I was like tapped out. Let me go. Let her go, man. My kid, my son over there. It's your team. I have a disability. She's strong, got me. I hope y'all got the on camera. She choked yeah, me and I saw her in the head. Okay, hey, walk right her out. Let's shake your head. Walk her out. Following the incident, Edward was taken to the hospital for evaluation and charged with three felony counts of battery on a law enforcement officer, attempted first-degree murder of an officer, resisting arrest with violence, and one misdemeanor count of disorderly conduct. His bail was set at just over $50,000. He's getting charged that attempted murder too. I'm gonna put that I'm on you. Not, you, bro, me. Bro, you made you me pass out. Me. You choked me you out, lying. and then you pass out. You You're getting that attempted so murder charge. Are See there. Okay, you got the worst of it, you a All right. That's what well, happened. Tough guy. We'll see you in court, man. Guy. We'll see you in court. He was doing this. He was he was doing this. With the I saw that. And he was doing this, and I was like, bro. And I pushed his hand away. Right. He's like, don't yeah. touch me. And he hit me. And I was like, bro, do not do that. Right. I was like, you need to step away right now. And I put my hand like this, and he hit my hand. He pushed me, and then we just went down. What's up, dude? Yeah. Right, yeah. And he choked me out good. You took me out? Oh yeah. 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 We were on the ground and he like I was like tapping out. Yeah. Oh he's not getting this bad early on. Oh. He's gonna he's gonna get more of that. Oh yeah, I was like Oh dude, it was a it was a it was a dog pile. But we, we like started it. They, they got the flights canceled, and then he was yelling at them, and I was like, we're closed, we're done, we're done, we're done this. And he started reaching his hand and like touching their keyboards, like typing on their keyboards, and I was like, bro, I was like, you can't be doing that. And he's like, the f***er touch me, he hit my hand. And then I was like, bro, back up, and then he hit my hand. And then I was like, you can't be doing that. And then I went over, I was like, you need to back up. And then he went like this, and I was like, okay. And then we went down the ground, and just on top of me, like, I don't care. Yeah. It's, all, it's on camera. It's all, it's all right. It's on, it's on camera. Uh, but yeah, then we were on the, we were on the ground, dude. He, he had me like, I, I came down like this, and he was on top of me. And I was like, I was tapping out, bro. I couldn't see shit. I know we're on, but this lady said, like, this guy's trying to grab your gun or something crazy. Oh, he choked, he, he made me pass out. Oh, jeez. He, cho he choked me out to where, like, I was, I couldn't see anything anymore. Oh, Oh, yeah. This guy. <clears throat> This guy claims he broke his leg, the one that's 1015. Okay. He was reached behind the ticket counter, like they were screaming at each other, and I was like, all right, we're closed, everything's closed now. And he was like slamming their keyboard, right? And I was like, I pushed his hand, I was like, bro, you can't do that back here. He's like, don't touch me, he did a hit. And I was like, step back, he keep right. doing that, he did a hit again, and then we locked up. And I was like, now you're going to jail. And he, he's a big boy, he leaned yes, he in. Is. At least now the officer has a story to share. But next up is a male Karen who thought a boat ramp was the perfect spot to mess around with a boat. Little did she know this would turn into her worst nightmare. But before diving in, a quick like would be greatly appreciated. Now let's jump right in. On June 18th, 2023, Officer Smith was on patrol at Volano Boat Ramp in St. Johns County, Florida, probably hoping for a quiet shift. But of course, the male Karen had other plans. A group of concerned citizens approached Officer Smith, complaining about a boat driving erratically. Come here! Hey! Come here! Come here! 
Officer Smith decided to investigate and spotted the boat in question. He signaled for it to come ashore. But the idiot that he was, Ken fiddled with the boat ropes like he was untangling Christmas lights in July. When he finally managed to dock, it was clear that his coordination was non-existent, just like his brain. Hey, you, come here. Can you safely pull up here and tie up? All right, come here. New boat? Okay. Well, it looks like that. Maybe you can put on that cleat, pull to the side. Can you put one on that side or one on this side? We'll pull it up this side, this way. As Officer Smith began his questioning, it became apparent that the suspect was intoxicated. His speech was slurred and her movements were clumsy. He tried to convince Officer Smith that he hadn't been drinking and that he was perfectly fine to operate his boat. Meanwhile, daughter Laren fumbled around looking for the boat registration. But at this point, Officer Smith just watched with a mixture of disbelief and amusement. This your boat? Your boat? Yes, sir. Okay. Can you get the registration while you're looking for that rope? I hadn't wrote you no tickets yet. I don't know what you're talking about. I don't know you. I know how it was. I already had one. And that was in the pretty picture. And the thing was that I was at actually in the... In the... You have your ID with you also? Yeah, I got it. All right, let me take a look at it. How long have you had your boat? About like two years. Two years? Yeah, but I still don't understand this shit. What to do. Okay, why don't you try that off? You got, a, you got another? Things escalated when Officer Smith asked the suspect if he had a fire extinguisher on board. Suspecting that the boat operator might be impaired, the officer asked if he had been drinking. Initially, he hesitated and claimed that he was safe to operate the vessel, but struggled to explain his erratic behavior. Do you have a fire extinguisher? Over there. I need you to get it. I need you to get it. You're the captain. Okay. Step up here if you don't mind. Okay, if you don't mind, let's walk up here. Off the ramp here. Well, you've been drinking today, right? Uh, I am not I'm safe. And well, it doesn't look like you're safe operating the boat like you was operating. How much you have to drink today? Okay, I'm going to ask you to do some field sobriety exercise. Do you agree a little bit of that? I wasn't the one driving the boat the whole time. You mind if I check your eyes real quick? My eyes? Mm -hmm. You said you had a stroke. Yeah. So I are did. you diabetic? Yeah, I am diabetic. This whole thing is do you, still do you, numbed. Okay. This whole side Listen is Listen to me. Numb. Do you need rescue up here? No. Why? Why? You said you're diabetic. And you're exhibiting just, signs of an impaired operator. So I'm trying to determine whether you're having a diabetic emergency or you're impaired. Sensing something was off, the officer requested that the captain perform some field sobriety exercises. What I want you to do is reach up with your right index finger and touch it. That just tells me, reach up and touch it with your right index finger. So it right tells me you can see fingers. it. Yeah, so you can see it. It tells me you can see it. See? Yeah. All right. All right. What I'm going to do, I'm going to move it back and forth in front of your face. I want you to follow your eyes. Do not, do not move your head. Do you understand? You mind uh, walking up here with me? Have a seat right here for me. You don't wish to participate in the field sobriety exercise? Well, I can't help you, but you know what? Unfortunately, I already went through a DUI. Well, this is not DUI. This would be BUI if you're under the influence. But I already went, and this was $890 that I had to spend. Okay, um, I, have, I have to advise you that if you do not take the field sobriety exercises, that it can be used against you in court. Do you understand that? No, no, we You do understand that? Yes, sir. Okay, and what the field sobriety consists of, go stand up and go over there. Go back. back. Back over there, I need you to back up. Please back up. Please back, back over up. There, deal with Don't him, okay? get involved. Please, Papito, go. Please listen to me. It's going to make matters worse. Let me deal with him. I'm sorry. Okay, I appreciate that. All right, listen. The field sobriety exercises, what they are, they're divided attention tasks. I'm trying to. No, I, I haven't made a decision. I'm trying to make a decision. Okay, so you're refusing to take the field no, sobriety exercise? I didn't exercise? say that. I said, if I'm here to get arrested. I'm well, I'm to... asking you to take the remaining field sobriety exercises I to dispel my belief. I can the thing, but if I'm going to get arrested, 
I, well, I haven't made that decision yet. But that's a, oh. See, that's why I'm asking well, you to I take the field sobriety exercises so you can dispel my belief that you're not an impaired operator. Well, you ask about the video camera? Yeah, it's got you video know, spinning really around out there and stuff. Good. I got you on video driving, man. Come on. Right, Are you yeah. so impaired that you don't remember no, driving? I remember. No. You remember? Whoa, 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 whoa. Watch your words. Well, you're tell telling me you weren't driving, you and I'm I telling did. you you were. Okay, I've explained the field sobriety exercises. Are you agreeable to take them? I have, I have to I'll take them. Okay, when I say begin, you're going to tilt your head back, and you're going to close your eyes about 45 degrees. That's when I say begin. Okay? Right, can I have something? Instead of just answering, the suspect decided to argue. He complained, moaned, and acted as if he was being accused of the crime of the century. Officer Smith tried to stay patient, but the suspect wasn't having it. He continued his rant and made himself look more foolish by the second. I need you to record this. It's already being recorded. Everything here is on the back I want to record it on my side. Okay. When I tell you to, you're going to touch the tip of your nose with the tip of your index finger and immediately return it to your side. It's oh, like this. One. Just one. You, only, you got an index finger on each hand. So if I say right, you come up with your right. Touch. Put your put your hand back down. There's no practice and stuff, okay? If I say right, come up with your right index finger. Touch the tip of the finger to the tip of the nose and back down. If I say left, come up with that index finger. Touch the tip of the finger to the tip of the nose and back down. Go stand over there. You can record all you want, but you're not going to interfere. Back up towards the mouth, please. Just back up. You just told her we're gonna put you in jail Please. if you don't. Simple me. as that. Stop making for interfering. Worse. I'm agreeing. You can hold all you want. Okay. Back up and back stop up. interfering. Don't go ahead. Damn it! I shouldn't have done this. Shit. I'm so sorry. Sixty-three cents. Back See up. If the city or the county. The same length as I am. No, come on, come on, man. We got a cop. Damn it, man. Here we go. I'm going to jail. I need you to back up to that freaking stand over there. Stand by while I'm doing field sobriety. I got back. to People are the same. Back up! Well, I'm not going to record it. He has to record it. Okay. What? Why do you think you're going to jail? They're irritating you. They're irritating you. Well, they're with you. That's your family, right? Like they don't listen. Is there somebody that hadn't been drinking that can get her out of the way and stop interfering? Because I'm going to have to put her in jail if she don't stop. And it's gonna be bad if you go to jail and she goes to jail too. Yeah, we're we like, what's up? Yeah. Well, that's not gonna be fun. But if she interferes again, she's going to jail. I just talked back to the Okay. Well, you did, and now you're upset that she's interfering. So she's interfering. I'm trying to determine whether you're an impaired operator. And if she comes over here again, you can express to her that she's going to be arrested. You're right. You're right. Okay, relax. Relax. Sit, sit straight. One, two, one, two, one, two. One, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. Okay, one. relax. Relax. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and down by your side. I went. One, two. Why were you operating a vessel? So why didn't you let him just pull your vessel up and tie it up to the dock and go get your truck? When it became clear that the operator was not fit to operate a boat or even stand up straight, Officer Smith decided to make an arrest. But the entitled Ken wasn't going down without a scene. He yelled, resisted, and made a grand show of his incompetence. Even his friends and family tried to intervene, but they were promptly told to back off or face arrest themselves. All right, stand up for me. Yes, Having knives, guns, hanging, anything like that? I'll give you everything. Oh, I just put your hands in my e-bank. So stop interfering because you're interfering now. Is there a reason for sir? He's not. He's under arrest. For what? Back up or you're going to jail with him. Put me in f***ing jail. I'll piss your ass what? Don't do it, please. Don't do it, please. I'll be here with you. I'm not going to run. I won't run. I swear to you. Right, Joe. Raise the f***ing head. Please, please don't do it. Please, please don't do it. Right. Don't do it, please. Don't do it, please. I'm with you. I'm with you. You're under arrest. No, please. You're under arrest. Don't do it, please. You're under arrest. Come here. Come here. You're under arrest. So I'm with you. 
So I'm with You're you. under arrest. Come I'm over here and put your hands on the car. I'm with you. I'm with you. you. I'm with you. I'm with you. Don't do it, please. Don't do it. Back up or you're going with her. Don't, don't do it. Back up or you're going don't with her. Do it. Hey, don't Sir, do it. I'm with you. Back up with her. You got control of all this. You got control. I'm with you. I'm with you. I'm with you. Don't do it. I'm with you. If you interfere again, you're going with her. I'm with you. Don't do it. Oh, my God. You're under arrest. No. You're under arrest. Put your hand on your back. No. What the hell is wrong with you, man? Oh my goodness! What the hell is wrong? Put your hands behind your back. You're under arrest. Oh my goodness! What the hell is wrong with you? I don't have a second set of cuffs. What the hell is wrong with you? As Officer Smith finally cuffed Ken, his wife screamed about how unfair everything was. Her complete lack of self-awareness was almost impressive. In reality, she was just another Karen who thought she was above the rules. And, of course, she was going to learn the hard way that she wasn't. Don't have all, how do you Nobody have? was near you. Nobody's even resisting. Nobody even touched you. Nobody said nothing to you. The thing was free, and I sprayed one. And he didn't tell them to get the out, right? Let me get him, put him in my truck. Fucking fire, fucking rescue. What the fuck kind of question is that? I'm just asking. I'm not gonna push him out. I was with you, bro. Listen, man, because your family's trying to jump on the dang police. I am not. Well, we didn't realize we were in so much trouble. We would have gone no, faster. They backed up and they stopped. Come on, but man. once I arrested him, that's when they came back up again. I'm sorry. You're cool, man. What? I don't want nothing to be with you, okay? Just have a seat right there, okay? okay? The, the bigger female came up. I okay. The yellow came up after I arrested him. Why are you arresting him? All that. I said, get back. I'd already warned her. And she goes, no, I, I, why is he be de being detained? You have to tell me. I said, ma'am, stop, stop resisting. You're interfering. He's trying to tell her to get back. She's like, no, and she comes up and tries to interfere again. I said, you're under arrest. Okay. That's when she goes, F you, I ain't under arrest. The second woman comes up, tries the video. Y'all tussle with so this got, one. So we got her for resisting? Yep, and, and her, her resisting. resisting. Okay. I, I bet that was worth the watch. But hang tight. There's one more case where Karens thought they could bully the cops without facing any consequences. On February 26, 2023, the Ohio police received a call about a disturbance at a local motel. The situation involved a large group of people, and at the center of it all was Karen. She was in her element, causing chaos and shouting nonsense. As officers arrived, they were met with a drunk guy who was yelling and spitting. Karens around him tried to control the guy, but clearly they couldn't. So the officers decided it was time to take matters into their own hands and arrest the guy. But watch how the Karens just go nuts.
The Karen started demanding that the officers not touch them and began yelling relentlessly like a bunch of maniacs. One of them even started ranting about a gun, she shouted and waved her arms. The officers tried to calm her down, but Karen wasn't having it. She even pulled out her gun and clearly that's a bad move. Hey, hey, no, she's, she's got, got a gun. gun. She's got a gun. Hey, she's got a gun right there. I got my gun, Lysis. No, I got my gun. No, she's under arrest. Hey, I got my gun, Lysis. I got my gun. No, I'm not gun. No, I'm not gun. No, I'm not gun. No, I'm not gun. Get off of me, you're going to. No, I'm not drunk at all. You were under arrest. I'm not drunk. You had a, you had a gun and a board. I got my gun. The officers reminded her that she couldn't have a gun in a place serving alcohol, but Karen was too far gone to understand. The scene was pure chaos. You just had a gun. I got my gun license. You can't have a gun in a bar. I got my gun license. Back up. Oh, I'm not going to oh, tell you again. You'll go too. My friend is like, I got my gun license. I don't give a shit. You can't have a gun in a bar. I'm not in a bar. This is a hotel. Do not spit on me. This is a hotel. I'm telling you, my friend is officer to shoot your ass. Because you're doing too much. I'm not about to shoot nobody. I'm not shooting nobody. This is a hotel. I'm not in a bar. I'm not in a bar. They are serving alcohol here and you have a gun. Karen kept flailing around and claimed her handcuffs were too tight, even though the officers showed they could fit two fingers between the cuffs and her wrists. She wasn't in pain. She just wanted to keep whining. I'm not drunk at all. Okay, can I get this hair out of my mouth? Back up. I can't get it. 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 I can not get it 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 i can
put everyone at risk tonight. I didn't do nothing. Okay. I didn't do nothing. Like y'all let the mother that did shit. Your list can turn completely freely on all both of them, and they've been locked. Well, they hurt. Okay, well, I can put two fingers. They're looser than even policy. But they Get still it. hurt, like. Okay, they they're hurt. not made to be comfortable. Get in the car. Girl, calm down. You're doing too much. Yeah. Bro, like, oh, you back up. I'm going to go fly. No, yeah, you back up. Yeah, I'm going to put it. See, both all Shit, y'all acting like, bro, like. Acting like nothing you're doing. You're not doing anything. 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 You're not doing Look, this is not what look we want to do. This is not fun. That's crazy. So my it thing is, is right? Who you, uh, who'd you get the gun off of? Her. She had a gun on her? Yeah. She had a gun on her. Yeah. She had a gun on her. Yeah. She had a gun on her. Do what? What a gun. Female in the black that I just put in the back of my car had a gun on her. Where's my gun? I got Emily in this truck. Do what? What the fuck? Why are you crazy on that guy? Why he just fought all these officers, why officers and spit on me. Why is he in the car? Can I get your name and badge? No, Step away from me. Y'all don't have to step away from me. Do you want me to take her? Can I get your name and badge? Back up. You're interfering with what we're doing. We're not. Back up. I'm smart. Back up now. I'm done. I'm done. Back up. 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 Back up, you're gonna be arrested. You are gonna be arrested for interfering. Back up now. Both of you. Stop. Intoxicated. Y'all don't know. You're drunk in public. Back up now. I don't know him. But y'all don't know him. I don't have to. Name him back. Y'all being weird. I went to. Y'all don't know I went to school for like four or five years. I know transfer her down. Now, for our final case, watch how an officer took deadly action when someone tried to bully one of their own. On December 6, 2017, in the tranquil setting of the Sunset Hills condominium in Florida, an ordinary day turned into a nightmare for law enforcement and residents alike. Deputies from the Broward County Sheriff's Office were dispatched to the complex after receiving a call about a disturbance involving a man named John Pedro Pierre. But what they encountered was far from routine. Damn, man! What is wrong with you? Stand down! Stand down! John Pedro Pierre, a 42-year-old man with a history of mental health issues, was in a state of heightened agitation when the deputies arrived. Witnesses later described him as pacing back and forth, muttering to himself, and appearing disconnected from reality. As the officers approached Pierre, they could see the signs of distress and tried to communicate with him, hoping to calm him down. Don't point at me, man. Huh? Step back. Step back for who? Step back. For who? For you? What's his problem? 794! 794! Get him down! Despite their attempts at peaceful dialogue, Pierre's behavior grew increasingly erratic. He ignored the officers' commands to stay still and instead began moving towards them in a menacing manner. The officers, sensing the potential for violence, positioned themselves defensively while continuing to talk to Pierre, urging him to cooperate. Suddenly, without warning, Pierre lunged at one of the deputies with surprising speed and strength. He grabbed the deputy by the leg, pulling him down with a force that caught everyone off guard. The deputy, now on the ground, struggled to break free from Pierre's grip, but Pierre's hold was unyielding. The situation escalated rapidly as the other deputies moved in to assist their colleague. Get your hands off him now! <laughs> The downed deputy, in a desperate attempt to subdue Pierre, reached for his taser and fired it. 
The electrical charge struck Pierre, but it had little effect. Pierre seemed almost impervious to the pain, his grip on the deputy's leg tightening as he pulled him closer. The other officers, now fully aware of the danger they were in, tried to pry Pierre off their colleague, but Pierre fought back with a ferocity that made it clear he was not going to surrender easily. As the officers struggled with Pierre, they were forced to make a split-second decision. With Pierre's strength and aggression posing a direct threat to their safety, one of the deputies drew his firearm and fired at Pierre. Pierre finally released his grip and collapsed to the ground. Despite the intense and dangerous situation they had just faced, the officers immediately began administering first aid to Pierre. They performed CPR, hoping to stabilize him until paramedics could arrive. Unfortunately, despite their efforts, John Pedro Pierre's injuries were too severe. He was transported to a nearby hospital, where he was later pronounced dead. The incident left the deputies involved deeply shaken, and the broader community was left grappling with the tragic outcome. In the days that followed, the shooting was the subject of an internal investigation by the Broward County Sheriff's Office. Unarmed assailants take guns away from police officers and there are many police officers in the United States of America who tragically, who tragically have died uh, at the hands of their own weapons. <laughs> what agency are you with? I'm the state attorney. Okay. All right. Thank you. If us officers stay behind you long enough, we can find a reason to pull you over. So you might as well get the f out of the way. That is called breach of peace. You want to try that, buddy. I will lock you up. For you want to try that. Yes, I will. You want to try that. All right. Try it. Oh, you're getting really close, man. Oh, yeah, yeah. I like to get close. I like to talk to people. Okay. Give me some space, dude. Go ahead and turn. Give me some space, Put your dude. Behind your back. No, give me some. Ow! Oh! Behind your back. what? I feel threatened because you're not putting that down. Yes, it is. I have a guy picking up trash. Put it down. I told you many times to put it down. And Cops are meant to protect us, but what about when they're the ones breaking the law? Corrupt cops love feeling untouchable, preying on people they think won't fight back. These days, even The Rock is not safe from them. But sometimes, just sometimes, they bite off more than they can chew by targeting someone who knows their rights. Or perhaps someone like the kind of folks who watch this channel. So through this episode, we will be covering three instances when corrupt cops got a reality check and a serious dent in their power trip. Starting off with Joshua Roberts, a First Amendment auditor whose role involves going to cities and towns to record videos of public places and police stations to test his First Amendment rights. On September 9th, 2022, Joshua was filming outside Dove Technologies in Florence, South Carolina, when two workers from the building approached him as he continued to document the scene. What was that? I can't hear you. Can I have your signed authorization? This guy's coming up aggressive, everyone. Can I help you? No, can we help can you help us? Yo, get away from me, buddy. No, dude. no, dude. Who are get you? The f away from me, dude. Why are why are you here? Back the f Why are you here? I suggest you leave me alone. Uh you're on private property. Uh, I suggest you do something about that then and get back inside. Ooh. Really? Yeah, really. You like going around with people like this? You, you know think what? that's fun? Don't, don't touch my buddy. It's, oh, go ahead. Oh, touch. so do it. Do it. What, 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 touch it. That's on camera. What, 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 back the. What are we doing here? Back the off, buddy. You touch. You get taste. Get the back inside. Don't fucking Get the f back inside. Do not touch me. I didn't touch you. I didn't touch you. Don't, don't. I didn't touch you. Don't, don't. Why did he come up and grab me? I didn't grab you. Yeah, you did. Yeah, you did, buddy. Get that thing out of my face. No, you f***ing come up to me. Get in my face. Right, I'll do something, buddy. Call, call, get inside. I'll call 911. Call get inside. Call the sheriff's Pussy. Whoa, dude. Whoa, dude. You just come up and grab people? What the f*** is and wrong with you? you? Your homie did. Don't hate my homie. This is, this is private property. You say you're filming. This is an easement. 
I'm not on your property. You see that? That belongs to the city. Joshua tells the workers that he's on an easement and not on private property. Luckily for him, the city data supports his claim. For those who don't know, an easement is an agreement where one party is granted access to land in exchange for a fee without ownership. So let me ask you a question. Does that give you the right to come up and grab my camera and almost break it? Hey. You assaulted me, buddy. Call the sheriff's department. Hey, call your husband. Wait, what? Call your husband. This surely explains the power trip as nothing boosts the ego like having a coworker with a cop husband. The cops eventually show up, making things even worse. What's going on, bud? Oh, nothing, just getting uh, assaulted out here, that's about it. Getting assaulted? Yeah, by one of their workers. What, what happened? I was just out here taking some pictures and one of the guys came out here saying he didn't want to be filmed and he ran up to me, started circling me, grabbed my camera, started pushing up on me. So that sounds like an assault to me. And it's all videotaped. You have it on video? Oh, it's all recorded. Luckily, he didn't break my camera. Otherwise, I probably couldn't show you guys if you want to see it. Because I do want to press charges on him. Because there's something involved in a taser. Oh, I pulled it out in self-defense. Okay. When you come out at me like that and you're about to destroy my stuff and put, do bodily harm to me, you're damn right I'm going to pull a taser on someone. Joshua assures the cop that he acted in self-defense, explaining that a worker grabbed his camera and pushed him, which qualifies as assault under South Carolina law. According to South Carolina law, assault and battery in the third degree occur when someone unlawfully injures or attempts to injure another person. Furthermore, South Carolina also has a stand-your-ground law, meaning Joshua didn't have to retreat before using force if he believed it was necessary to prevent harm. You need to tell that guy he needs to not put hands on people. It's a short little fat guy. I'm aggressive. Okay. Oh, yeah, we're gonna do a report on them, too. That's fine. We can, yep. we can do that. Oh, yeah, they're gonna have to learn. Just, I just need to give this deputy your information for me, all right? You got an ID or something? I don't have an ID. Okay. Yeah, buddy, you're gonna learn. You can't come outside and grab people, man. That ain't right. Let me address something. Oh, we're handling this. Don't, don't yell. You're just all right. calls him to get up. Is it free speech? Am I allowed to say stuff? Well, you have a freedom of speech, but there's also something called breach of peace. Okay, I'd like to see you try that, buddy. Those okay. people put hands on me. I'm the okay. victim. So you want you want to turn it around on me? I'm not turning it around. Please do so. Let me explain something to you, all right? Hey, yeah. yeah, sure. Explain to me public photography and people coming up and touching me. What did I do wrong? Are well, you going to let me talk? Go on ahead. What I was saying is, I don't need you yelling while I'm trying to talk to this man, because that's going to cause him to yell calls the scene, you get mad, he's gonna get mad, then it escalates. Okay. Just talk to this deputy. Let me tell you something. I'm allowed to say whatever the hell I want. You if I want to say shit to him because he came up and grabbed me, and I want to call him a dummy for doing that, I have every right to. What? If you yell across this parking lot, well, you have all these people standing around, and it's called breach of peace. You want to try that, buddy. I will lock you up. For you want to try that. Yes, I will. You want to try that. All right. Try We're it. Not doing that try right, it. Dude try it. The officer threatened Joshua with a breach of peace for yelling across the parking lot, but in South Carolina, breach of peace is frustratingly vague. There's no single law defining it, so it's been shaped over time by various court cases. Generally, it involves causing public disorder or actions likely to spark violence. Now, yelling can sometimes fall into this category, or it can be protected free speech. This is where it gets tricky, so context matters. The location, the volume, who else is around? All of this determines if it's simply speech or a genuine disruption. There's a narrow exception to the First Amendment called fighting words, meant for language directly intended to incite immediate violence. Profanity alone usually doesn't meet that standard, and that's why courts have repeatedly defended the right to express unpopular views, even loudly, as long as it doesn't truly create chaos or direct threats of harm. Too bad the officer was ignorant of this law before speaking. Shortly after the officers then conducted their investigation, but as expected, did the opposite of what they should have done. I spoke with the two gentlemen that came out and dealt with you. All right, all their information is going to be entered into the report as well as your statement you gave this deputy. All right, all right. I made them aware that yes, you can view video from a public area, which the roadway is public, but if you cross over into the I've grass, checked the property lines, I don't need directives. Okay. Well, well, well I, I still got to tell you, okay? You don't have to tell me. Well, I'm going. Do I get a report or something? You gotta get your own Oh, great, this guy. Oh, there'll be a big protest here, buddy. I'm gonna have big signs that say, fuck Dub. And I 
like to see you come try to do something then. We're gonna have a nice little protest out here. Peaceful protest. Here you go, buddy. All right, my name, badge number beside it, and your case number as well. You can get a copy of the report in 35 minutes. Later. Have a good day. Thank you. This could have been the end, but more cops kept showing up while Joshua kept filming within legal bounds. Everything was fine until this officer thought he had it all figured out. Perhaps he's the husband the other guy wanted in the first place. Hey, call your husband! For, hey, call your husband! Soon he approaches Joshua, and that's when things take an unexpected turn. How you doing, sir? How you doing, sir? Uh, not too good. Wow, what's going on today, buddy? I had some dude inside. Oh, you're getting really close, man. Oh, yeah, yeah. I like to get close. I like to talk to people. Can you stop? No, no, sir. So I, I want to talk to you. What's dude, going on, stop, my friend? Stop fucking getting so close to me, dude. What's going on, man? Dude, stop approaching me. Sir, I, I'm Back allowed to approach you. Back the off, dude. Okay. Give me some space, dude. Go ahead and turn. Give me some space, dude. No, give me some... Ow! Oh, my... Get the fuck behind your back. For what? For what? For, uh, for you? Absolutely. Oh, yeah. Very nice, dude. Very nice, enjoy the lawsuit. Enjoy paying for my camera too. Absolutely. You getting resisting arrest? Resisting, I'm not moving. Nope, when I went to put my hands on you, you pulled away from me. Yeah, because you have no right to arrest me. Sir, you're nothing. under arrest. You had the right to have him You kept approaching me. You Sir, you had the right to attorney have him or president before you question to ask you deciding any time to exercise these rights and not make any more statements. Do you understand these rights? I don't answer any more questions without a lawyer. The officer later identified as Sergeant Paul Morrison clearly invaded Joshua's personal space. This made Joshua step back, and while doing so, he dropped the F-bomb, which really got on Sergeant Morrison's nerves. As a result, Morrison tackled Joshua to the ground, yelling, You're under arrest for resisting. Now, Joshua argued that he was just moving back, and he's got a point. According to the South Carolina law, resisting arrest is only a no-no if you know you're being arrested. But Morrison never made that clear, raising the question of whether Joshua could have violated this law if he didn't realize what was happening. Furthermore, it's unclear what grounds Sergeant Morrison had for arresting Joshua in the first place. South Carolina courts have long recognized recognize the right of citizens to resist unlawful arrests. They don't have to submit and may even use force proportionate to the officer's unlawful actions. Since Joshua simply stepped back without physically attacking the officer, a strong case could be made that any arrest was unlawful. Unfortunately, knowing your rights doesn't always protect you in the heat of the moment because Joshua was arrested and taken to jail, but no criminal charges were filed. After his release, he filed a formal complaint and thankfully, the department took it seriously. They conducted an internal investigation, which eventually led to Sergeant Morrison's resignation. Cases like these shake our trust in the police, but this next case will leave you questioning your safety even when dealing with cops on your own property. On March 1st, 2019, a college student, Zaid Atkinson, was picking up trash outside his residence when Officer John Smiley noticed and confronted him. I couldn't help but notice you just sitting on the patio out there. What's that? I couldn't help but notice you sitting on the patio behind this building. Yeah. Yeah, I just, and there are the signs for no trespassing, private property, that kind of thing. Yeah, I wasn't sure what you were doing, if you lived here, or you worked here. Yeah, it looks like you're working, doing I'm something, picking stuff up. Okay, gotcha. What's the actual address then? Okay, what unit are you in? I don't think I have to actually tell you that. Well, I'm just checking to make sure that you have a right to be here, that's all. I just told you I lived here, Okay. I told you that I'm working as well. Okay. Well, I, I gotta verify it just so I know that, that you do in fact live here. What do you what do you need from me? If you have an ID with your address on it, that'd be great. Well, we've had some stuff going on in this area. I'm just doing my job, just making sure you belong here, and if you do, then great, and I'll be on my way. This raises some serious red flags because the Fourth Amendment exists to protect us from unreasonable searches and seizures. Sure, cops can have casual chats, but demanding information like this starts to feel like an official stop. And that requires reasonable suspicion that a crime has occurred or is about to. Picking up trash just doesn't fit that description. To prevent any escalation, Zaid willingly presents his ID, even though he is not obligated to do so. However, the officer remains to be a jerk as the card does not display his address. Uh, Zaid, do you have anything with your address on it? Oh, why, don't you, why don't you follow just me relax. and I'll just fucking leave the building, dude. Just chill out, man. It's, it's ridiculous. I'm just asking you if you have something with your address on it, then oh that, that would help me. No, I don't. How am I okay. supposed to have something with my address well, on it? A lot of people have a they driver's license. Carry their, they just carry something with their address on it? Yeah, an ID. It's ridiculous. Yeah. So, Mr. Atkinson, 
Jackson, can I get your date of birth, please? Why? I just need to verify who you are, that you belong here, that you have a right to be here, okay? Are you kidding me, man? Can you have a seat, please? No, no. Mr. Atkinson? No. No, I'm not. I'm not. 290, code 12. Can you please have a seat? No. Put that down. Stop. Mr. Atkinson, right now you're obstructing a police officer, which is a jailable offense. I'm asking you one more time to sit down. I'm not doing anything wrong. And you're not going to arrest me. You're not going to do anything. Because I live here. And I didn't do anything wrong. Last chance, sir. By this point, Zaid is visibly frustrated, and rightfully so. Because as per the Colorado Revised Statute 163103, officers are only authorized to obtain a suspect's name, address, and an explanation. Any additional information, such as date of birth, is not required. Moreover, Zaid went the extra mile by providing his ID, and even offered to buzz himself into the building to demonstrate his residency. Since the conversation is going nowhere, Zaid chooses to carry on with picking up trash. Have a seat. What? Sit down. You're gonna arrest the right now, I'm detaining you someone? and investigating you're gonna, you're you for a trespass. You're gonna, I fucking live here, dumbass. Sit down. Sit down. No. Have you, a seat, please. You're gonna tase me outside of my residence? I hope that Drop that. On. Put that down. I hope the camera's on, sir. Put that down. No, I'm working. You need I'm to listen to what I'm telling you to do right now. I'm not doing anything. I'm not doing anything. Okay, Katie, we're on the east side of. 2333 Blunt object? It's just a trash picker for heaven's sake. Officer Smiley is the only one here, so any backup unit arriving might misinterpret it as something dangerous until they actually see it. This just shows how Officer Smiley is willingly trying to escalate the situation. Sit down. No, I'm not sitting down. Then you're probably gonna get tased in a second. Why? Because you have a weapon. Put I, that down. I have a weapon? Put it down and comply with my orders. That's not what you're doing, officer. Do you it. Better think, because I got fucking, dude, I could get lawyers, and you have a you, camera on you. It's filming right now. You're an idiot. Have a Why seat, please. Why would you please. think that you could taste me? I'm freaking picking up trash on my property. I need to confirm it. Which is it. where there's, I live. There's a sign. I'm not doing anything illegal, and you're not going to fucking taste me, officer. So Sit how do down. you think about that? Sit down. How do you feel about that, sir? Sit down How do you feel about now, that, sir. And get your freaking lieutenant here. All They're right? on the way. Yeah, good. Jackass. Here, you I'm have a dangerous see. object in your hand, I and you're failing to put it down. I'm picking up trash. Put it down. You're, you're being me. detained. Your hand is on your weapon, and you're gonna shoot me. That's what you're gonna do, officer. Are you gonna kill me? <laughs> Several times I've your asked you. On your yes, it is. I feel threatened gun. because you're not That's putting that down. Yes, it is. I have a, I'm picking up trash. Put it down. I I'm told you many times to put it down. And you're holding a gun. Put it down. And you're holding a gun. Sir, put it down. And you're holding a gun. How do you feel? Yo, somebody, yo, hey. Right. Somebody in 2333, get a camera on this, on this officer. He has a gun in his hand, and he's going to shoot me. And he's gonna shoot me. You got a camera? Exactly. That's my boy, Sinio, right there. This hey, is Pearl, my we're residence. Just to the east of You're on my here, property sir. with a gun in your hand. Sit down. To shoot me because I'm picking up trash. I hope that sit camera's down. on fucking camera. Where's your lieutenant? Just sit down. Where's your lieutenant? Officer, he's got a gun. He's sit down. He's got a gun. He's got a gun. Have a seat. He's got a gun. He's sit got down. A gun. Within minutes, another officer arrives and swiftly draws his taser. I can't blame him, as Officer Smiley radioed in the trash picker as a supposed dangerous weapon. However, things escalate further when over the next 10 minutes, at least eight more officers arrive on the scene. Now ask yourself, would you feel safe around these cops if you were in the same situation? I'm not doing it. Have a seat. Drop it. Drop it. Drop it. Why do you all four of the police The police are telling you to do something. Do it. Yes, I do, because you're not listening. You have a fucking gun You have a weapon. Have Drop a weapon. the weapon. Drop it. I don't have a weapon. Drop it now. I told you I'm investigating a trespass. You didn't give me your address. 2333, I live in room 304. That's the first time. I have a seat. The worst part about this is the fact that the cops have zero authority to trespass on someone without being given the power by the landowner or the resident. Doing this to me! 
sit down. I'm a and citizen drop it. of this country. Sit I down. pay my taxes. I am a student, and all of you have weapons drawn, and I sit feel down. threatened. Sit down and drop that. No, out. I will not sit down. I refuse to sit down you until you guys down? put your f***ing weapons away. Put your goddamn weapons away. Put your f***ing gun away. Have a seat. Put your f***ing gun away. Have a seat. Put your gun away, and I will I'm not putting my gun away. Did you hear that? Officer Smiley won't put his gun away despite having eight other officers on the scene. Don't instances like these make you question if the academy is intentionally training officers to escalate minor situations like this? By now, of the eight officers on the scene, one had his taser unholstered, two had their firearms unholstered, and another had his orange less-than-lethal beanbag shotgun slung over his shoulder. It's no wonder Zaid is furious with these cops' behavior. Now, one of the officers enters the building to talk to two residents who confirm that Zaid does indeed live there. It's at this moment that they all recognize their mistake. With the looming threat of a lawsuit awakening their dormant memory, they miraculously recall the de-escalation course they once attended and attempt to put it into practice. Hey, Zay. What? Okay, these are these nice people here told me that you are a resident. Oh, wow. So Zay, What a f***ing surprise. That's what we were trying to find out, okay? What a f***ing surprise. I gave him my ID, okay. and then he started, and he started taking down my fucking information, telling me this, that, and the other thing. And then I walk away, and he pulls his f***ing taser out so on me. So Zayd, I'm listening to you, and I just appreciate it. So, so Zayd, if you were willing to sit down, this would bring everything down a little bit. And start I, down I, and I up. do not feel comfortable sitting down around a bunch of fucking murderers. I now found out who you are. I found out you're a resident here. I gave him my ID. He knew who I was. I said my name was Zayd Atkinson. Okay. I gave him my ID. He asked me what the address was. I said 2333. I said, let me walk up to the door and beat myself into the building. And he refused to let me walk to my house. Okay, Zay, I, I, you're How is that okay? So How is that okay? I'm understanding you're upset. What do you mean you're Did understanding I'm upset? He came out with a shotgun. Of course I'm upset. He pulled out his fucking his gun and, weapon. and said that I'm a We're fucking threat. Trying to get him to On so. my own property, I'm a threat because I'm picking up okay, garbage. Take a step back. Why don't you get off my property? Okay. Why don't you get off my property? That's what I'm trying to resolve. Why don't you? And you didn't know a goddamn thing. You're wasting all our fucking resources. I didn't even point my gun You're at you. You're wasting all our resources. There's people out there actually committing crimes. Like, can I, can How I do tell you, you something? Feel? Can How I tell you, you something? How do you feel? You're ready to jump out of your skin because you know you fucking made a dumb mistake today. Can I tell you something? No. I don't want to hear it. Okay. I want you to get Why off my property. Why don't you talk to my partner? Then? I don't want to talk to any of you. Right now, I need boys. you to sit down so we can figure it out. I want you guys to get off my property and stop wasting my fucking time. That's not going to happen until I confirm who you are and what you're doing. Shouldn't it have ended there? But no. Officer Smiley, driven by some weird urge, still wanted Zaid's personal information. Shortly after, Smiley's supervisor approached him to discuss the situation. And that's when it finally dawned on him how wrong he's been. I saw him sitting here. Yeah, and you need to tell me who the you are, what's the your name? Property sign. Oh, maybe he, he, he wasn't really yelling at anything. He's kind of milling about, yeah, come back down, sit, yeah. milling about, come back down, and sit. And then when I came into the alley, he, he stood up and I saw oh, that he had that metal yeah. thing. Yeah. And it looked like he was kind of banging it, like against, I don't against the, shit, so I wasn't sure if he was like trying to damage something. Or, okay. And then, and then I addressed him and then he proceeded to, to walk around here and I saw it was like a device for picking up trash and he was picking up trash. So I contacted him and just asked him, hey, can I uh, let me chat with you? I'm just checking to make sure that, that you have a right to be here. And, and then he, he initially talks to me, gives, uh, I ask him, why he's here and he says he lives here and works here and I ask him for the address and he turns and reads it off of the building okay um, and he won't tell me his apartment number he gives me a like some kind of school ID but it doesn't have a date of birth so I ask him for his date of birth Do you that, it? no at that point he refuses and he starts walking away um, picks up the the, that metal object in the bucket and walks away from me. I just follow him at okay. a distance until the cover gets here. Okay. Um, so we, we've confirmed that he lives here, right? No. Uh, well, he just did. Uh, okay. Parker just did. He confirmed that he lives here. Uh, according, okay. according to him, he lives here. He just provided a unit number, finally. I don't have a date of birth. I don't know who he is. Um, okay. 
All right, so let's, uh, you got his uh, information in terms of his name and all that? I just have his name. Okay, then uh, give him his uh, ID back jackass. and we're out of here. Yeah, because we already jackass. confirmed he's there and this the gentleman here just person. said, yeah, he works here and lives, lives here. So. Okay. Yeah. 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 I think he just kind of... You'd think his supervisor telling him off would be enough, but no. Officer Smiley had to go and do something shady, and this time he turned off the audio on his body cam. Now we're left wondering what he's up to, maybe discussing how he can misuse his power. This totally defeats the purpose of having body cams. If an officer can just turn them off at their own free will, then what's the point of having them in the first place? Eventually, Officer Smiley returns the ID card and leaves without making a scene. Following this, an internal investigation was initiated. Smiley would likely have been suspended or fired for violating department policies, but managed to resign before the disciplinary process concluded. What made us sick was that upon resigning, Officer Smiley made an agreement allowing him to collect $69,000 in salary. On the bright side, the city of Boulder offered a $125,000 settlement to Zaid Atkinson. Moving on to our next case, watch a cop trying to initiate an unlawful traffic stop, only to encounter someone even more influential than himself. On June 19, 2017, as Aramis Ayala headed home from her teaching session at Florida A&M Law School, she was pulled over by two Orlando police officers in Paramore. The body cam footage of the traffic stop, which lasts a little over a minute, ends quickly after Miss Ayala informs them that she is a state attorney. Oh, you're good. <clears throat> what agency are you with? I'm the state attorney. State attorney. All right. Thank you. Your tag didn't come back. Never seen that before. Um, I'm sorry? Like yeah. We're good now. So it was... We ran the tag. It, I've never seen it before. A Florida tag. It's never come back to anything before. <clears throat> so that's the reason for the stop. Miss Ayala was driving a state-issued vehicle, and in her capacity as a state attorney, accounted for the confidential license plates. However, being a legal pro, she knew exactly what questions to ask. Who was the tag run for? I'm sorry? Was it, what was the tag run for? Oh, we run tags all the time, whether it's the traffic lights and, and that sort of stuff. That's how we figure out if, you know, cars are stolen and that sort of thing. Also, the, the windows were really dark. I don't have a tint measure, but that's another reason for the stop. As per the officer, running tags is a routine task, but pay attention to the specific examples he mentions. What was the tag run for? Oh, we run tags all the time, whether it's the traffic lights and, and that sort of stuff. That's how we figure out if, you know, cars are stolen and that sort of thing. It was at this moment that he knew he fucked up. Miss Ayala certainly did not run red lights. The only other reason mentioned was the possibility of the person having stolen the vehicle, prompting them to check the license plate. This is precisely why thousands expressed their anger in response to this video, accusing the cop of racial profiling. Ayala's grin showed she knew exactly what was happening. After public outcry, Orlando police tried defending themselves, stating that running license plates is a standard procedure allowed only for official purposes. Additionally, they explained that the tint appeared dark because the officers couldn't make out who or how many people were inside the vehicle. Do you guys have cards on here? Yeah, one second, please. Actually, this isn't my car, but I can write my name down if you'd like. What's your uh, employee number? One five seven. Ready. <clears throat> there you are. Have a good day. Later, Ayala herself said that the stop appeared to be inconsistent with Florida law, and she was sure that she didn't break any laws. Her license plate, while confidential, was and remained properly registered, and the tint on her vehicle was in no way a violation of Florida law. No ticket was issued, and police confirmed no charges were filed. 
Many online users wanted Miss Ayala to sue the department, but she chose a mature approach. Instead of legal action, she decided to talk openly with the chief of the Orlando Police Department about how unnecessary traffic stops like these affect the community and the department. This shows how two authority figures acted differently. One followed the law and didn't misuse power, while the other might have allegedly racially profiled someone or just misused it as they see fit. Doesn't it make you think how things would have been different if this happened to an average person? That's it for today, folks. If you learned something, drop a like and subscribe to our channel. Stay safe, and we'll see you in the next one.